our danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. This time, it's France. I've missed the train, and I'm trying to overtake it. I was supposed to meet a man named Holcomb at the Paris Depot and accompany him to a defense conference in Italy. Holcomb's head of an American plastic company, and he's carrying a secret report with him. Somehow, I missed him in Paris, but I wasn't the only one. Duval, a European representative of the plastic company, was waiting at the depot, too. Well, if our luck goes good, we should overtake the train at Clizard, Mitchell. I hope so. This report that Holcomb is carrying, it's uh, about some kind of a liquid, isn't it? Oh, yes, a new secret discovery. It's a liquid which makes uh, weapons resistant in sub-zero temperatures. Oh. You know, uh, Holcomb has conducted the field tests in Scandinavia recently himself. He's compiled a complete report about it, the exact formula the methods of application, and the results. <laughs> you know, it seems to me that a report like that would be worth an awful lot of money if it got into the wrong hands. Oh, bien sûr. And someone is trying to get his hands on it all right. Yeah, that's why I'm here. That attempt on Holcomb's life at the airport. But you know something? Not making these connections has got me worried. My message was that Holcomb was on the 8.30 train. As was mine. It's extremely fortunate that you managed to determine that he was on an earlier train. <laughs> you know, I still don't understand how you found out so quickly. <laughs> That's just part of the job, Duval. I sure hope missing those connections was an accident. So do I. A telegram from Monsieur Holcomb. It was waiting at our last stop. Thank you, Conductor. <laughs> That's strange. Sir? Oh, nothing. What time are we getting, Cusseri? At our last stop, uh, one hour. Thank you, Conductor. By the way, if you see my secretary, tell her I want to see her right away. Very well, Monsieur. Did you send word to Mitchell that we'll be on the 7.30 train out of Paris? Why, well, yes, of course. Also to Mr. Duval. I can't understand when either one of them made it. <laughs> Somehow, Mitchell got the idea we'd be on the 8.30 train, according to his telegram. Telegram? Yeah. Fortunately, he found out that we would be on the earlier train. He and Duval are trying to catch up with us at the next stop. Sorry. I see. Oh, it's a funny thing about this telegram. I. I don't quite get it. If Mitchell's getting out at the next stop, that doesn't give me as much time as I thought. Phyllis, you? Me. So you're the one that's after my report. I'm telling you now, you can't get away with it. Don't kid yourself. I'm not alone in this deal. I've got help. It's a nice little bucket brigade. <laughs> is just ahead. Mademoiselle Baxter, Monsieur Holcomb is expecting someone at Clissard. 
We are out in five minutes. Thanks very much. I'll tell him. Very well, mademoiselle. sooner than we figured, but I've got it. See me now, I'm gonna get off and get lost before. Monsieur Holcomb is expecting both of you gentlemen. Did he receive my telegram? I delivered it myself. Hey, what's with the light? We have had trouble with them ever since we left Paris. Monsieur Holcomb. Monsieur Holcomb. This is strange. Got a key? Yes. You better use it. Monsieur Holcomb. Oh, that's so weird. Miss Baxter, where is she? The secretary? Oui. Wait a minute. She's the one that sent me that message with the wrong train time. But Michelle, you believe she killed Holcomb? Well, she'll do till a better suspect comes along. But she could have got off at Crizal. If so, we are too late. Perhaps not. We are just leaving the yards. Look, stop the train, conductor. Give her description to the local police. Have them surround the depot. Very Maybe well. somebody spotted her, huh? Yes, sir. Mitchell, do you believe this Phyllis Baxter killed Holcomb in order to get his report? If she killed him, that could be a good reason. Well, the report isn't here anywhere. It isn't on him. And it's not in his briefcase. Have you got any idea what the report looked like? I No, I, of course, have not seen it. He compiled it himself and made only one copy. But I imagine that it would run to several pages. It did, all right. Five minutes later, the conductor's back with one of the local police. None of the porters or cab drivers at the depot saw anybody get off the train at all, which could mean that Phyllis Baxter's still aboard. Monsieur Mitchell, I will make an immediate search of the train for the young woman in question. I have posted officers on each side of the track. No one will go undetected. Well, I'll give you a hand, but let's do it as quietly as possible. I'd like no one to know the reason why. Well, the passenger will want to know why the train has been stopped. Well, think up some reason. There it is. Tell him you're working on the lights. Very well, sir. Lock it. If you and the conductor want to take one direction, Duval and I will take the other. From the description the conductor has given us, we should be able to spot her. Bien. like Holcomb's. We better go get the others. I've got an idea we've hit the jackpot again. Phyllis Baxter? Oui, Monsieur Holcomb's secretary. If you don't mind, I will wait outside. Looks like I've been running a poor second all the way. She seems to have been shot at close range with a large caliber revolver. Mm. 
illness. Any sign of the report? Uh, it does not seem to be on her. No. Well, perhaps that thing. Yeah. Uh huh. Some kind of light, huh? Yeah. Hey. One of those gadgets that develops your picture in one minute. So that's why she burned the report. Yeah, she probably photographed it. No film. But perhaps it is in her purse. No. No, it is not in here. However, there is this. A somewhat smaller caliber than the one that killed her. Has it been fired? We. Oui. Five will get you ten that that's the gun that killed Holcomb. Phyllis Baxter kills Holcomb and then photographs the report. Hmm? But where is the film? Show me her killer and I'll show you the film. Ah, uh, oui, that seems to be a good reason for her murder. I have an idea she passed that film on to someone else and collected a payoff she wasn't expecting. How much longer will it be necessary to hold the train? Well, ordinarily, I would make a thorough search of the train, but in a situation like this... Yeah, we haven't got a lead on whom we're looking for in the first place, and in the second place, they'd get rid of the film awful fast if they thought the search was official. Ah, you are suggesting that you make an unofficial search? Well, undercover. When your medical examiner is through, uh, could you arrange to get the bodies off the train without attracting any attention? Ah, perhaps through the window. Yeah. Shortly after midnight. What's our next stop? Fontaine. A little after three in the morning. And the next one? Maglia, a resort at the Italian border, the end of the line. We will arrive shortly after daybreak. Well, that gives me all night. If I run on anything, I'll contact the police in Fontaine. Uh, bien. I will uh, see if the medical examiner is through in Mr. and Monsieur Holcomb's compartment. Yeah. Well, you find a killer and find some film. But how? Where do we start? That's a good question. Mm. Finding a needle in a haystack would be easier than this. Yeah, we haven't got one lead. Wait a minute. 33C. Well, what does it mean? It means that maybe we have got a lead. Salami? No, thanks. <laughs> you? No, I'm else. It's too bad. People don't realize what a wonderful thing is salami. <laughs> well, at a distance. Want some wine? No, thanks. How about you? No, merci. Uh, the little lady. Uh, no, thank you. Nobody likes Gluca's wine, but Gluca. <laughs> Quite a collection of travel folders. I didn't realize there were so many places to see. <laughs> Not much of a traveler, huh? No. This is my first trip away from home. What part of Holland is home? What? Rotterdam. Now, how did you know I was a Dutch girl? <laughs> that... Freshly scrubbed look is hard to mistake. Oh, yeah. Now that I'm traveling, I should use makeup like other women. But Mama always said. Mama was right. Nice cheese? No, thanks. Hey, you must have a hollow leg. Eating and drinking is wonderful when you're riding. <laughs> what about when you're not riding? <laughs> it's just as wonderful. <laughs> guy who sneaks peeks at me over a newspaper. A little Dutch girl and the salami kid. <laughs> hey, do you think we're in the right compartment? Who can say? The man with the newspaper. Did you see the briefcase? Yeah, strapped to his wrist. 
Well, if he's got our film, I don't think he'd carry it in as conspicuous a spot as that. Posing as a diplomatic courier, you know, could be good cover. Hmm? That's a thought. Look, I can't fight that salami any longer. I think I'll go out and smoke a cigarette. You keep your eye on him, will you? tried to invite me off the train. Who was it? I don't know. Must have heard you coming. It's just fortunate I came along as I did. Yeah. What's the next stop? Fontaine, we arrive in a few minutes. Will you have anything to tell the police? No. I haven't found the killer yet, but it's a cinch he's found me. It'll fix it right away. No, thanks. What, uh, what happened? Somebody jumped me. Where's the guy with the briefcase? He left the compartment right after you did. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry, but the air in here made me so drowsy. Speak of the devil. Are you referring to me, monsieur? I certainly am. Oh, the lights again. I thought that's why they delayed the train, to fix the lights. What a train! Mitchell. You know, I had a hunch this wasn't a good seat to be in in the dark. Looks like I was right. Plenty sharp. Yeah. It's sharp. Where were you a few moments ago? That is none of your affair. You could be wrong. Where were you? I was getting a drink of water, if that meets with your approval. You sure you weren't out in the vestibule? Of course not. Monsieur, I suggest you mind your own business. Did you leave the compartment? I've been busy eating. Oh, your hand. Let me see it. Okay. Oh, it should be washed. Oh, it's just a scrape. Please. Four ten, next stop. Four ten, next stop. Where is the drinking water? At the end of the car. What's on your mind, Miss... Uh... Karen. Mm -hmm. You know the man eating salami? Gluka, yes. What about him? He lied to me. What? He did leave the compartment after you left. Mm. I was afraid to tell you in front of him. Thank you, Miss Karen. Richard. Yes. Miss Karen just told me that Gluka did leave the compartment while you were taking a nap. What? But I just came to tell you that Gluka is getting off here. Mm. We must follow him. <laughs> I was looking for you. <laughs> Here, I want to leave you the rest of this, because now I go home and have dinner. <laughs> I couldn't be more pleased. Huh. Well, looks like our briefcase boy is riding to the end of the line. You know, something bothers me about this deal. Something bothers me, too. Gluka. And we must hurry or the train will start up. I'm playing a hunch. I'm staying. 
But the girl who told us that Gluka lied. Yeah, I know. So we're going to guard both ends. You get off here and follow Gluka. I'll stay and keep my eye on the briefcase boy. Nothing, you ain't. And try and stay awake. The rest of the way to Maglia, I keep my eye on Pierre, who divides his time between tossing me nasty glances and making an occasional pitch at Karen, who, in her wide-eyed way, seems flattered by the attention. But I've still got that feeling, something pecking away at my brain that I can't peg, something that doesn't quite add up. It's daylight when we arrive at Maglia. I overhear Pierre and Karen talking about an inn where they can get breakfast. I follow them. Ah, uh, buongiorno, signore. Come stai stamattina? Se te vuoi mangiare, io tengo qualche cosa giusto speciale. Okay, I'll take some. Wait a minute. What is it? It's a ham. Oh, never mind. This will do. Si. This has gone far enough. Mitchell, I know why you're following me. Well, now that we understand each other... You are obviously a rival agent. So? For a rival manufacturer. Rival what? Do not attempt subterfuge. You learned about new creation. You learned I am on my way to Italy to introduce it. You followed me to steal it. Wait a minute. You're leaving me way behind. Who do you work for, anyway? As you know, for a chain bonnet. A chain... Bon... What's that? What? You do not know the name of a chain bonnet. No. I'm beginning to think I don't know what you've got in there, either. Monsieur, I believe you are telling me the truth. A new model, exquisite and revolutionary. Not a two-way, not a three-way, but a four-way stretch. I haven't got troubles of my own. I have to get mixed up with a girdle salesman yet. It appears my salesmanship is not so good in other directions. <laughs> I am, how you say, stood up. Well, don't worry, four-way. She's probably just gone to powder her nose. Mitchell. Yeah, Mr. Mitchell. What's the meaning of this? I think the meaning is right here. Well, what's so strange about a woman's compact? Nothing, except when it's carried by someone who's pretending to be a freshly scrubbed little Dutch girl who doesn't wear makeup. You know, when you offered to help me with my hand on the train, I spotted this in your purse. And you took me out in the corridor and whispered sweet nothings about Gluka. But it didn't register until just a moment ago. You have no proof. I have the film. That's proof enough. You took this off Phyllis Baxter right after you killed her. That's not true. Save the pretends, my dear. Deval, how did you get here ahead of the train? The way that you taught me to once, in a fast car. So it's been you and Karen all along, huh? Exactly. Sure. You were the one that bopped me on the train and then pretended you were asleep. You tried for me with a knife, too. Kill him, Duval. In a moment, my dear. All right, Mitchell. The film. OK. <laughs> uh-uh. Come here, little pumpernickel. Sit down. You got a date with the police. You know, that was a pretty good scheme you had rigged. Might have gone over, too, except that you overplayed your part a little. What do you mean? Well, if you'd really been wearing makeup, I would never have tumbled to the compact. Yeah. But then the whole matter might have taken on a entirely different complexion. Mm -hmm. 